Welcome to Undefeated Miles Podcast, where we represent elevated innovation over ignorance. I am your boy, your dog, your daddy, you feel me? I'm in here now. That's the new saying for 2022. We in here. We in here. So, my dog. What's up, man? It's your boy, Mr. Stepper, a.k.a. Shotter. Or you can say it back, but Shotter, a.k.a. Mr. Stepper. That's what you want to see. What you want to be. I'm in your I like mind. that. If it makes sense for it. It makes sense back. It makes sense backwards. Yes, sir. So what's good, man? How you feeling, man? Oh, we got to do the traditional. How you feeling? Well, check. How you feeling? Um, emotional, physically, emotional, and um, business wise. Let's keep it with that. Physically, physically, I've been, I've been getting back into the routine of uh, the mental aspect. I'm trying to make my mind, body, and soul one trying to keep those on the same inclination of just building upward because it don't matter if you build your outer appearance if you ain't working on the substance inside. So I say I'm about a, a six, seven on the on the physical. Uh, what's the next one? Was it mental or is it? Yep, you, can, you can say mental. Mental, I'm at an a eight. eight. I've been reading and reading more. The bro always been saying read these books. So I've been reading these books, y'all. It's some shit in them. Some good stuff. Um, and then it just made me understand a little bit more, a different perspective, always being acceptable to a different perspective. And spiritually, was it spiritually? You say, you say emotion. no, you said physically, By, physically mentally, mentally, and emotionally. And emotionally, I'm on 10. 10. I got two bundles of joy. They're giving me encouragement. I got my dog here. Uh, different year. I'm just washing away old shit, like bullshit. I can just say, I, I'm saying it, and it feel easier to say. It was just, it was one of the things when you say it's like a rough surface, and now you saying it like, all right. So. Yeah. So. What about you, bro? Physically, um, I'm getting there, you feel me? Like, so I challenged myself to walk to the gym, which is about a mile and a half away. But no That's matter what. Rain, snow, you know what I'm saying, sleet, cold, hot, don't matter. I still got to walk to the gym for 30 days as the time that I, like, got to work out. I Do I rest in between? Like, yeah, so I go three days on, one day, one day off, three days on, one day off. Mm-hmm. So the days off, I don't walk. But um, it's, it's a battle because it's, it's more so for your character building. That's a hell of a discipline. It's, it's it's more so I like to call it a control struggle. Like I'm past the discipline part now. I'm just putting myself through a struggle to build, to be stronger. You know what I'm saying? Build get, build character. Like, but if, they, well, I mean, discipline builds character too, right? It do, but you can judge somebody's character when you give them power or how they go through, how they handle adversity. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So like, okay. discipline is just gonna keep you on the path. Okay. But the path is the battle itself. How you handle the path. All right. You feel me? Like, and that's going to be determined based off of who you are. Yeah. Somebody might get into a situation that might overwhelm them, might panic. They might fold. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, personally, I like to walk, to challenge myself. Mm. I like to go through the uh, battles to challenge myself, you know, going through the struggles. Everybody talk about the struggle. Everybody talk about this struggle. But how did you handle that struggle? Mm-hmm. Was, did you fold? Did you break your principles? Did you mm-hmm. were you willing to do any and everything to get out of that? Your true character, even morally, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. So I always put myself through a controlled struggle to let, so I can challenge my basically my morals. Are, basically, not my morals, my principles. Mm. So, am I gonna stop? Because mm. it's cold. Mm. Am I gonna stop? Because it's raining. Mm. Am I gonna stop? Because it's snowing. Like, nah, I, I want that shit. So. I'm going to do it. I got to go get it. I got it. And I, and I wake up at like 4 in the morning to do it. You know what I'm saying? That's that's double struggles because right. I got to wake up early. And I got to go walk in the cold. Yeah. That's a beast for a mile and a half. Yeah, dog. But, he a beast. That. I'm, I can honestly say I'm waking up at 6.30. I wake up at 6.30 and stretch. I stretch and I read. I've been reading. Uh, that 430 mile marker. <laughs> if, if I ain't going to look. I'm going to tell you, the only way I'm getting up at 4 o'clock, earlier than 4 o'clock, if, if I ain't go to bed, 
<laughs> I ain't gonna be, if I went to bed super early and I woke up at, at one o'clock, two o'clock. Cause it's been a couple of nights where it's been late night, night. And I'm like, bro, I be, be feeling it <laughs> this day. But oh, for sure, I, I, yeah, that mental block. That one day I just entered in your world of just reading and dissecting and studying. I call it homework. Yeah, I like to brainwash yeah. myself and back to the homework yeah. because now I was real good in school, and me understanding, okay, I had a balance of school, so I, now I got to take that same schedule routine and just start changing the label. So now I still call it homework because I'm like, what principle or what technique did they use that I can use for myself? What morals and principles that they go by? What do millionaires do? Basic. What do successful people do? Yeah. And what can I use and take away from it for my personal life? Right. And you've been telling me that the underlying principles and the unwritten rules of things that the code of ethics that I sometimes that if I'm not paying attention to is going to go right above my head. And I'm just trying to be like, I'm trying to waking up that third eye for myself and just understand like, it's some shit that I ain't seeing, but I'm starting to break away from that old habits and just old shell and being able to say, ah, I see now. Mm. So that's when, when you say reading and watching and studying and paying attention to people that we normally don't in our in our inner circle just watching different people because it's different forms of success it's different forms of uh discipline different forms of characters out here that we can always take the good of and mm -hmm. then understand and learn from somebody else's mistake mm -hmm. so that's what and it's tiring oh yeah which goes into mentally Training. like how am i how am I mentally? Mentally, I'm cool. Like, if I had to rank myself, oh, if I had to rank myself physically, I'm at like, I'm still like a six. Cause mm. right now I'm in my 240s. I was at 260, but now I'm in 240s. So I'm, it's it's going down there. You know what I'm saying? But um, mentally, I would say I'm at like a solid nine, nine and a half, mm. because I'm very aware mm. of what's going on around me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm very aware. Of what I'm learning, I'm very, I'm being very intentional about what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm being, I'm, I'm putting myself through adversity mentally to be the best. Mm -hmm. I, I was asked a question like, you know, why do I call myself the king? Uh, I'm like, I necessarily don't look at myself like a king. I, I'm not a king yet because there's, I don't have a family to be able to, you know, protect. So I'm building my kingdom. Mm -hmm. To become a king. Once I am a king, you don't know. Mm -hmm. But right now I'm not a king. I'm in the process of becoming a king. So I like to look at myself as the king, aristocratic. like As though I see myself as though I am. Yep, which is was which is in the 48 Laws of Power. I don't even know where the hell that came from. Nah, it's in, it's in the 48 Laws of Power. I think I seen something. I seen something. I heard something like that, man. You, you, you. Act like what you want to become. Right. Not even what you want to become, what you are. So yeah. you become that. You know what I'm saying? If you believe that and if you move as the, as that, then you will ultimately be that. Like People be like, oh, I want to be in love. Well, shit, I am love. Because anything, you, you can go in, you can go out. Right. So I am love. You know what I'm saying? I am king. Right. Um, so mentally, I'm at, I'm at like a nine and a half. Um, emotionally... What is it? Physically, mentally, emotionally. Emotionally, dog, you know me. I'm I'm connected to mine. So when I'm upset, I'm upset. Mm -hmm. When I'm happy, dog, I'm happy. When you when riding I'm, that wave, that's yeah. how we was talking. When I'm about. in it, I'm in it. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't shy away from it. You know what I'm saying? If, if it's something that made me upset, I'm like, hey, yo. It's bothering me. Yeah. And like, that's when we create our safe space and we sit down and we figure this shit out. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't ever sit in it. Um and um, you know. Just try not to let it, let it control you, cause mm. I always tell you, you know what I'm saying. If somebody can can take control of your emotions, they got power over you. Yeah, and fuck you, all that. We said uh, Mike Tyson said it to Saquon Barkley. He yeah. was like, if you allow somebody else to to change to you. change you, they won. The devil won. He was like, no, nah, I'm just quick to cut him off. No, you you allowed them to have control of you to change to change you. Yeah, so that that's that's the devil. 
Yeah. And not, and not, we're going to target on that because we, we, we always say something about safe space. And we're going to be honest, bro. It's not easy creating a safe space. It's not easy for a man, for a woman to just come out and say, hey, this bothered me. Because a lot of times either we overthink it or we underthink it or we don't truly, truly understand, like, it's never going to be easy. I struggle with it. Sometimes he be like, bro, talk to me. And I be like. Yeah, all right. Out. And so, and then, you know, and how we work on that is just saying it, you know. But you got to know your people. You got to know your person. Because, again, he know me well enough to know, like, all right, bro, there's some things you ain't saying. What's up? Stop sugarcoating shit to me. Talk to me. And knowing that your people ain't going to judge you. And when they do talk to you, it's, it's only for benefits. It's, it's never to gain anything or take away from you. Yeah. So it's not going to be easy, but you got to you gotta trust that. And it's, again, because a lot of times we Scorpio, so we always be like, mm, mm-hmm. uh, all right. Yeah, it's skeptical about a lot of skeptical. stuff. Skeptical. But it's, it's a process because we both are alpha. A lot of people are a lot of people are alpha. We're going to just say that. Some people they still identify themselves as. But Listen, I'm going to use a quote from Kratos. You know what I'm saying? And he say, we win because we are disciplined, determined, not because we feel superior that, of others. Mm-hmm. Basically, we stay focused and true to the path, our own path. Um, a noble man does not have to be superior towards others. A noble man is fighting to be superior of himself mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so basically i'm in competition with myself i was asked by francis uh the other day as far as in being the best mm-hmm. she asked me she was like how did you create this mindset of being the best and why do you want that i was like because i just want to control the experience if i can control everything as far as in you know how i give off what i'm giving off for you to have an amazing experience then that's all that mattered to me. She, then she flipped the scenario. It was like, well, what if, uh, it, well, do you want them to say that you are the best? I say, no. I really don't care about them saying that I'm the best. As long as I'm trying, mm-hmm. they let me know I'm doing my job. I'm focused more so on me. Like, how could I, like I told you the other day, I record myself so I can study myself. Yeah. I. How can I be better? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, damn, I could have. It articulated my words like this. If I would have learned or read deeper about this, oh damn, I could have. The way I lifted this way, one arm was in balance. You know what I'm saying? I got to focus on this because I can't see myself like right now. But when I rewatch this video, I'm gonna be able to study my body language to be able to study me. So then, when I get myself into a certain circumstance, situation, I can feel myself doing what I've been studying. So then I can kind of correct myself. So it's not really about if I care about somebody else's opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to outbeat me. You get what I'm saying? I'm trying to be the best version of me. So I gotta study myself. To be able to understand. And that's why you can easily say the best, the best version. I'm the best version the of best myself. best version of myself. And there's no competition with nobody else but yourself. No, not at all. I don't have to build, I don't have to tear down another man's building just to, so big, to build a bigger building. And I think that's what it comes to me as being an artist. You know, we get so caught up into, well, I'm going to just use myself because I don't want to put my, my thing off on somebody else. I can honestly say I got so caught up into seeing YouTube, uh, Facebook, watching certain things of people saying my success, I won't be, never be a successful artist or a rapper based off what I'm seeing these people do. Yeah. And what I had to take a step back from was, am I doing what I love doing? Am I working towards that goal? Mm. When I say my music, how does it make me feel? And how do people impact, how does it impact people around me? And when I say it to the crowd or the people and they let it hear it, it always make people feel good. And my way of that is I'm doing what I love to do. I haven't successfully got to that goal where I wanted to be able to live off the dream that I want to yet, but I'm still in the grind mode in the process of it. Yeah. So I think it's, it can be worded a little bit better what I'm trying to say, mm-hmm. but you get where I'm going with what I'm saying for myself. Like don't get caught up in nobody else's grind don't get caught up into somebody else's success because it's been years that they've been envisioning what they've been trying to do and working on. Yeah, like how Nip say you don't want to poison your passion. But right. uh, you can get caught up into watching other people and stop working on yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I get what you're saying. I'm not going to even sit here and 
and and basically critique how you said it. What I want you to do, what I ta- what I challenge you to do, because mm-hmm. I can't tell you what to do, but right. what I can do is challenge you to rewatch this video mm-hmm. a month from now, two months from now, three months from now, five months from now, all the way till next year, right. January. What's today? Mm-hmm. January seventeenth. Mm-hmm. 2023 January 17th rewatch this video and see how you articulate in your words see how confident you come off on camera see how you are able to see damn last year I was talking like this but now I'm talking like this right and then next that next year 2024 you know what I'm saying you're gonna be like damn I was talking like this back in 2023 2022 I was talking back this 2023 now 2024, I'm balling. You hear me? Right. So I think that's that's what I challenge you to do. Think mm-hmm. beyond and then study the moment. Live in the moment, mm-hmm. but think beyond the moment. You know what I'm saying? You're preparing for the future by doing what you need to do in the moment. Right. By being aware of being in the moment. You know me, I say time not real. It's just a construct. But I digress. I don't want to get into that topic. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that being said, man, where we at on time? Uh, we got a minute. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit an intermission real quick. Um, hopefully, y'all enjoy the in between shots and whatnot. But y'all stay tuned. We're about to hit an intermission real quick. And we'll see y'all. We're going to give it to the, the hot topic of this conversation. Chip on my shoulder. y'all so we are back you feel me and we about to get to the main subject of this so basically you know i've been really trying to implement and telling him challenge yourself to read challenge yourself to read y'all know i'm huge on reading every episode i refer y'all to a book if i don't refer you to a book it's just because either i forgot to but nine times out of ten i don't so with that being said, the book that we've been focusing on, what he's been focusing okay. on, is the Forty Eight Laws of Power. And every year I read this book at the beginning of the year, so I can read from front to back. But the Forty Eight Laws of Power is not one of those books where you just read like a regular book where you just go through it and you're done. Like no, you want to take each law and study the law. Give yourself a week per law. You know what I'm saying? So if it's 48 laws, 48 weeks, you know what I'm saying? And it's 52 weeks in a year, so that means you should be able to finish this book. Basically. Four if, weeks in, well, four weeks left, so you can reassess everything. And you just keep reiterating, and once you get faster and faster, you know, one law per day. I personally do one law per day. So I challenge him to be able to f- find a law that we wanted to talk about today. And what was that law, bro? Uh, I'm going to read it how it's worded inside the book. I just had it, so bear with me. Uh, oops, Lord. See how I said it? Lord. 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 <laughs> there it go. <laughs> right there on time. Law 6, court attention at all cost. So, I'm going to show y'all. And then I'm pretty sure Big Bro will edit. <clears throat> But court attention at all costs. Um, I'm going to read the judgment to it. And then we're just going to go deep from there. Go deep from there. Do your thing, bro. <clears throat> it's a judgment. Everything is judged by its appearance. What is unseen counts for nothing. Never let yourself get lost in the crowd, then or buried in oblivion. Stand out. Be conspicuous at all costs. Make yourself a magnet of attention by appearing larger, more colorful, more mysterious than the bland and timid masses. Hmm. So, with, with you reading that, I want you to give your interpretation of you reading that, then I'm going to get mine. Mm. I think what I what I noticed was, based off when I read the chapter and 
the examples it gave me, it gave me the. Don't go too deep into it. Yeah. Just just focus on what you read. Just read. The judgment. The, don't get that part. Yet. Masters. Okay. So just being seen, being always there. Like we always say no such thing as you know bad publicity. Which is a law. It's a law. I'm gonna look it up, but it go ahead. It's it's no such thing as bad publicity, it's only publicity. Uh being on the scene, not being timid, always being yourself, being unique, standing out, never shine above. It's like you being in a room full of hundreds of people. It's like being an artist, being a rapper, or being the best football player. You have to do something that makes you stand out. You have to have your difference. You have to have your own uniqueness. Now, we do have good things into this law, and you do have bad things into a law. It's anything. But how you go about it is up to your choosing. My understanding... I'm going to just say with my example. Can I say my example? Yeah, go ahead. I think it's LeBron. My example of LeBron being the best basketball player ever, some people will disagree, some people will not. Will not. But what one thing you can say is every time LeBron's name is being brought up, people know who he is. People are going to say the two things. He's the greatest, he's the worst. I can't stand him or I like everything about him. Even though he did nothing wrong, mm -hmm. people are still going to find something to judge. Yeah. So I feel like he's a great person to fit into that law. Within six, you know, being in the law six of this book, um, and he's not gonna shy away from being who he is. He try to take back from being called the greatest, but he let other people call him that. Yeah. So he do. You know, it's it's one of the things, man. He's arguably one of the greatest basketball players alive, and. Regardless of him not doing anything negative or having a bad reputation, having a loving family, wife, being a great role model to a lot of black men, people hate his guts. And they hate greatness, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, keep going. It, it, I would challenge you now to give an example of you trying to court attention at all costs. For myself? Yeah, like, is there an example in your past that you... That you can relate to this law. Yeah. That you had all of the attention on you. Intentionally. Intentionally. Um, I can say my locks draw a lot of attention. I can say my eyes for a lot of women draw a lot of attention. Good or bad. They can come up to me and say, you look toxic. And I can play into their hand and say, I am toxic. Or I can just sit around and, and prove them different. But I'm always going to be the topic. A trending topic. If it's good or bad. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's just one of them. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, when you first read that, I'll go back into the judgment. When you first read that, what that, what how I interpret that was basically be intentional about what you put out. Right. But don't give away your intentions. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Have a little mystery to who you are, but you want to seek that attention mm. at all costs. Okay, you know okay, what I'm saying? Okay. When you implement that, that's when you're using that power to your advantage the most. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it's kind of like giving, but not enough. Giving, I mean, but not giving all. Giving just enough for people to talk about you. But you're not telling them truly your intentions, mm. um, which is a law in there. Conceal your intentions, uh, which is I think I believe the second or third law. I think it's the third law. If I'm not it mistaken. is one of the third. But um, yeah. Now, who I feel as if does this law the best, in my opinion, is Donald Trump. <laughs> I believe Donald Trump did this law yeah. the best because law three <clears throat> um, conceal your intentions. I believe that, per, as an example, I'm going to just use this example so you can have a clear understanding of how this law really works, was the MAGA hat, make America great again, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you pay attention to when he wore that hat, it caused a lot of commotion, mm -hmm. it caused a lot of chaos, and the whole purpose of the MAGA hat was to say, make America great again. Mm -hmm. Now, I never told you. If I'm American. Donald Trump, yeah. I never told you what time period America was great. Mm -hmm. I just put it out there 
for you to say, for you to create that narrative for yourself. That's the mystery part about it. Because I didn't tell you my intentions behind why I was wearing this. It, it say it right here, plain as day, make America great again. But you never asked the question, when was America great again? A lot of people created the narrative of whites created it as far as in, oh, when we had the money. Well, black people's experience in America was, it was never great. Mm -hmm. So there was chaos and there was conflict. Mm -hmm. And as long as there's chaos and conflict, you're going to talk about it. Yeah. And the more you talk about it, the more powerful I become. You know what I'm saying? So when he created that narrative, he never concealed when he was talking about making America great again. It wasn't specific. Nope. So another situation <clears throat> as far as in keeping out the immigrants, right? He never specified what immigrant was you trying to keep out. But he said, keep out the immigrants because they're taking up all the jobs. Mm -hmm. All the immigrants coming over here, uh, drunk driving, causing the most car accident, death, and all that stuff. But what immigrants are you talking about? He never said that. So what I'm doing is I'm playing to I'm playing into a narrative of, mm -hmm. oh, you dislike me because of this. Mm -hmm. Well, you created a narrative, but I'll lean on it because you're going to talk about me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want that attention that gives me more power. So I personally believe that he he come out, he'll boast about who he is. He'll talk trash because he know you're going to keep talking about me. Right. And especially if I got you through emotion, you really going to talk about me. That basically means he had power over your life. This whole time. This whole entire time. And now you you saying that, because I remember when I seen it, <clears throat> it used to strike a nerve for me as far as in make America great again type. I'm like, man, like I was one of them people. Man, America ain't never been great for me. Like, it ain't never been great for my people. I know for a fact. But it still played on my head when somebody said Donald Trump. When well, somebody, I immediately was able to recognize, I was immediately on defense. I was immediately on edge. Like, <clears throat> it struck a nerve to me to the point where I was like, I got to look into this to this situation to understand because I know a lot of stuff is false propaganda on internet. Denzel said this quote, and I like it. If you watch the news, you're misinformed. If you don't watch the news, you're uninformed. Yeah. Meaning as... Just as quick as you can get this information and it's fabricated to you, that doesn't mean that it's authentic. It doesn't mean it's 100% true. Yeah. So you can be going off somebody else's opinion, but it's making your own opinion. It's like the Indian tale. Like, you, you remember when the teacher used to make everybody sit in a circle and she would, like, whisper with somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the time it get back to the person that it came back to, it's a whole nother thing. That. <clears throat> so that's why I'm like, believe for half of what you hear and nothing, well, believe for half of what you see and nothing that you heard. Yeah. So, since you said that, and y'all know I refer to y'all to a book. There's a book I want you to grab, bro. I got you. It's, it's right by the power note all the way to your right. Right? You come down, come down. It's orange. Grab that. Right. Yep, yep, yep. Propaganda. Yep. It's called Propaganda. And it basically is talking about how propaganda works. The best person who used propaganda to their advantage is the Freud family. And this is kind of like what this book is about. The Freud? Uh, the Sigma Freud family. Okay. Um, um, see? Okay. So basically, this family was <clears throat> good at marketing the psychology of the human brain and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, they studied the shit. They were so weird. They were so deep into it that they seemed crazy. You know what I'm saying? Their personal story was crazy. Wow. But this is the book that I'm talking about, right? One of my clients actually bought me this book because he saw that I get into this type of stuff. So he was like, hey, man, you should really check out this book because on my Instagram, you know, I like to talk my shit. Um, but basically he was just in this book it teaches you exactly what you're talking about like how everything is hidden in plain sight yeah so um 
With that being said, like, let me see how I can use this as an example of how I use this law. For me, growing up, my nickname was Swole, right? Right, right. So, I didn't talk much. But, my size did the talking. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, seventh grade, looking like a grown man. Like, everybody called me Swole. So, how I look right now, I just had hair. I was 205 pounds in In seventh grade. grade. That's most, that's a lot bigger than a lot of men. Yeah, like, so, being being that big, being called Swole, I didn't have to do a lot. But, I always made sure I was seen, especially when it came to sports, and when it came to women, you know what I'm saying? Women gonna talk. So, Word and I knew word of mouth spread way faster than anything. Mm-hmm. So I will always seem bigger than me the eye because I believe that mystery of me not saying nothing, mm-hmm. me not picking the side of oh, I'm cool with these people, or I'm cool with that people. I was cool with everybody. Yeah. And I wanted to be cool with everybody purposely because I never wanted I didn't want anybody to put me in a specific category. Correct. Um so I said less than necessary, but I always made myself available to people. Um, and that was all the way from seventh grade all the way up to the time through college. Mm-hmm. Now, if you pay attention, mind you, we went to school together. Mm-hmm. Everybody knew exactly who I was because of the color of my book bag. Yep. And I had and I was, had a bald head, right? But I never talked. But I had so many people dislike me. It was crazy. It I didn't do nothing to nobody. It bothered. It bothered. It bothered the fuck out they of people. To, they used to be talking about it, <clears throat> and I'm sitting there. I'm like, "What the fuck is they talking about?" Then they they was like, "Yeah, him." Like you talking about Deshaun? Like you talking about why y'all just y'all man, call this man his name? Like I'm, but it, it I I can see that, bro. I watched it. Being being told being talked about to somebody else is like you looking for a whole other person, and then you finally looking you're like, bro, I, I see this. <laughs> I, 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 I see him every see day. Every day. What you talking about? What you talking about? Like, and I'm like, damn, like that's that's just one of the things. Like my little brother, then when I um Colin when he was in school, and so many teachers and kids used to come up to him like Colin ain't never been bullied. Colin ain't never been touched around the neighborhood. But, yeah. When he finally got up into the people that gave me those names and stuff, and they was like, my brother don't do certain things like that. He was like, shit, like, <laughs> you fuck around. You, you just don't know. <laughs> you just don't know. And, you know, it it, it, it kind of goes over people's heads because the reputation. Reputation does mean law. And a lot of times that, that those words and placement could be a, a, a big mark on your reputation or mark on your resume. Because now when people try to identify you as, when I first got to North Carolina, people called me Bama. Mm, that's that's that, not what I... That's not what I want to go by, but people, Bama, 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 Bama. I'm like, okay, now if you go there and they're like, yeah, ain't you Bama? I'm like, hmm, yeah. But that's just how stamps go, man. Yeah, man, like, one thing I'll say, like, what I allowed people to do was have the narrative. Okay, if that's what you want to believe... If you want to believe I'm the big guy that's arrogant, if you want to believe that I'm the big cocky guy, if you want to believe, if you wanted to believe that uh, I was just that guy, I would allow you to believe it because I knew the truth. So as long as you had this narrative about you or, or you telling yourself that you, this is what you think, I didn't mind. I didn't care. I wanted you to feel that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was people who hated me because they didn't know. Who you so were. So I allowed them to hate me because yeah. it, they ultimately kept talking about me. Then when I used to walk around, it's cool. Oh, you smell nice. You dress nice and stuff like that. The people who hate it, they hated hearing it. Like, so they kept talking about it. They kept talking about me. And I knew I was very aware of it. They kept talking about me, so I'd pop up on campus next thing you know with this gold ass book bag on flashy as hell 
and wouldn't say shit to nobody. I'll find him, go holler at him, but I'll make sure I'm seen everywhere. And then I'll always respect my elders enough for them to be on my side. So for then sure. if somebody did try to say something wild or reckless, they can be like, hell no. His it's a contradiction. Yeah, it's a, it's, it doesn't match. It don't match because everything he did for me right. was banging. And but then, all my hate, the people who hated what it. What made it more validated too on that, to not to cut you off, was when you when people that knew you heard those things. They're like, hell no. Y'all obviously don't know him. That means you heard it through the grapevine and you like everybody else. You're going to follow that rumor, that tale. You're not for certain on what you're talking about. You're just going off with the flow of somebody else said, like who's hating apparently. And I used to be like, man, I can't get with the crowd. Like I just can't put my head down and go in the same direction. I'm like, what the fuck is we going this way for? Like, mm-hmm. tell me why we going this way. Yeah. Now, if we get to running, you be like, shit, run. I ain't going to look back and see where yeah. we're running from. Yeah. But you get where I'm going with it. Yeah. So with that being said, when we come, we're going to hit an intermission real quick. We're going to come back, and we're basically going to explain it in a way how you can use Law 6. Six. So, ah. Yeah. All right, so we are back from the intermission. Um, I think a good way or a good example that people could use this law, court attention at all costs, is social media. Oh, yes. Um, Because you have... You have the control to post what you want to post, how often you want to post. There's no limitation to to the type of post that you can post. It's free marketing. It's basically, and that's marketing. It can be used to this, um, to, to your advantage. You can draw so much attention by doing dumb shit. But, um. And we see it every day on TikTok. Yep. TikTok, we see it on these little videos, entertainment videos, little trailers or whatever. Mm-hmm. To the point now when we glorify the most stupidest shit. And we hop on trends because of the attention that trends will bring you. Right. You see people on TikTok, they doing all that stuff and they doing it for the attention to post and get attention back. Which, um, there's a book that I want you to refer to. Run into my room. It's, it's called. Uh, it's a white book. It's called The Molecule of More. I got you. Um, and basically, how we get addicted to social media is dopamine. So every time you are dropping something to try to catch attention, it's because of dopamine. Flowers and look like a brain. That's that's exactly what it's for. Uh. <laughs> It's called the molecule of more. This is what it looked like. And um, basically it says, how a single chemical in your brain drives love, sex, and creativity and will determine the fate of hum- the human race. Now, that's a strong statement, but at the end of the day, like, based off of human patterns, we can be predicted. But going back into what I'm saying, how you can use that to your advantage is controlling what you post because you could feed into people with dopamine and aware being aware yeah. a lot of people like I said I feel like a lot of people do master the the art of law six very well and, 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 and unaware don't even know it yeah. don't even know they're doing yeah. it and the intentions that you told me to be cautious of that you talked to me about and I want you to explain on that is a lot of times you create these trends and these theories for me, I'm gonna use music. A lot of artists is glorify a lot of the dope boy dream, the mm. fast car, the quick money, the fast life, but don't tell the full out circle of the intentions behind it. They didn't start off doing this because that's what they wanted to do. A lot of them, yeah, they say, oh yeah, I, I looked up to these people, but then you didn't really do that because yeah. of that. You did it because you had to. But then you talk about it because you are fabricating a story and making it seem luscious and lavish. But the back end side of that, Go to jail. Jail ain't pretty. You lose out on a lot of people. You hurt a lot of people. That's the mystery. The, the behind mystery it. behind it. But now you are putting this big portrait up like, oh, this is how it go. You go to jail. You get notarized. You get famous. No. So how, how Robert Greene would explain that, it's the reverse mm-hmm. of the law. Mm-hmm. 
Because if it makes sense for it, it got to make sense about it. Correct. If you use this law the wrong way, using your example, what you just said, it hurts you. basically, it hurts you. It can backfire on you. If you know you if you know you out here slinging, right. and you trying to court all attention at all costs, it make it make sense. sense. That law is not for you. That law is not for you. It's not meant for you to use. But the fact that you're using that law indirectly and being unaware of it, you're drawing so much attention on you via all these chains, all this jewelry, but you are living hot. Right. This whole point is you you want to stay low key. It's fast money to fastly invest to get out. Um, Ricky, uh, the Rick Ross, Ricky Rose was selling. Um, Working at a car wash. Not not Rick Ross. Oh, you talking about the real the real Rick Ross, the real yeah. Ricky Rose. Yeah. Uh, he was selling for a long time, and they couldn't find out who he was because he was riding around in the bucket. Basically, bro had hella money, hella dope on him. Yeah. And you can look up his story, you know what I'm saying, where he was explaining like, yo, I was right low key. No, nah, it was an old man. I met him, bro. He still, he, still he, he stopped. He passed it on. But we call him OG. I'm going to just say OG. OG two times, right? OG two times rode around in a truck that smelled like shit. He had manure on the back, dirt, old trash, picking up trash for the little neighborhood and stuff like that, riding around. And his son was like, Dad, like, we got all this money and stuff. Like, I'm going to get this car. So his son stacked all the money that his dad used to give him up, and he went and bought him a brand new Cadillac around this time. Around this time, Cadillac around like 1990. So you get in a 1995 Cadillac, and you putting the dupes on it with the little spoilers that's sitting out. And his dad walked up to him, like, he snatched him up. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, this is the first time my daddy said to me, like, you fucking up. My dad always was smooth, calm, collected, and he used to ride around in this stanky-ass truck. Mm-hmm. So he told me, you sell that car right now, or you can't come home. I ain't claiming you. He sold a car, and he went back to the daddy. He was like, why are you telling me this? He was like, you see this right here? It's a million dollars right here. Old time, his daddy walking around with keys in the back of the truck. But you would never touch it because you would think it's so stank. It's so obvious in plain sight. He never wore the fanciest stuff like Frank Lucas wore that alpaca, the chinchilla coat. He never wore the fame, like the, the notorious stuff. and never went to jail for it. Touched a lot of money. Mm. But it was in plain sight. And so that's what I get from the example you said of Ricky Ward. Like Ricky, not Ricky Ward. Ricky, Ricky Rose. Rose. Yeah. It's, it is, but a lot of people don't master it enough to that point to humble, like to, to give off that image. A lot of people, once you get that much money, I know once I get that much money, I ain't finna ride around. You gotta practice like the art of moving in silence, saying less than necessary. Right. Um, that's, that's a practice that's very tough. Because when you want to do something, mm. you got to have the ability to be able to say no. Mm. But the, tem- the peer pressure and the temptations of other people, you got to be able to say, nah, that's not the right move. I can't do that right now. You know what I'm saying? But that's the reversal law of courting attention at all costs if you use it incorrectly. Mm. There's a time and a place for you to use this law. If you're not hearing nothing about Donald Trump right now. Right. He's not using the law. What do you need it for? Is it is it the fact that they banned all his social medias on all platforms? Nah. And even then, using that as an example, he used social media to, for you to talk about him. Right. When he you when he said some crazy ass wild tweet, the internet is the news went crazy. Every time he tweeted, they was like, every he time sleep. he tweeted, he never sleeps. You know what I'm saying? Who's to say that that was really him? But the fact that it was his picture, it said Donald Trump. You know what I'm saying? You never knew if he really controlled his account. Right. But the fact that it said that, and he said something crazy, we talked about it. And they gave him more power. They gave him more power. He legit made a stamp on everybody's life for the rest of their lives. You say the same thing for uh, the new president, no? Nah. Biden. He didn't do it. Biden. He he ain't doing it like Trump did. Biden. See, he he like, shout out to uh, Muhammad Ali, it's his birthday, you know what I'm saying? Muhammad Ali used an example of of how racism worked. Mm. Um, he explained it, and I've experienced this, 
because I, I say this all the time, up north racism is the worst racism mm. than down south. Down south is different. Because it's notable. Because it's, it's, it's you can see it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can hear it. They'll tell you, listen, we don't like your kind around here. Right. But the white folks up north, gonna hey, smile. how you doing? Shake your hand, but then they'll hit you economically where you won't even see it coming. Put it on a contract. You sign something, basically you sign your life away. So the example that Muhammad Ali used was, he said, you had a rattlesnake and then you had a cobra. He said, I like the rattlesnake Cause it let because me know. It, it'll let you know when you get close to him, you're going to hear the See, but a cobra, they get real close to you and they'll bite you. He said, two different white men. Right. One white man to tell you, I don't like you. But the white man up north, they smarter. They move in silence. They'll bite you. That's what Joe Biden doing right now, basically. Mm -hmm. You had Donald Trump, where he was the rattlesnake. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden, he's smooth. He chilling. Smooth cut. Who he learned that from? Barack Obama. Smooth, chill. Everybody loved Barack Obama because he was too smooth. And he was black. Mm. So... Now we're using both laws. Right. How people use the laws to their advantage. Each law is not meant for you to use all the time, every day. Correct, correct. You just use it when you can use it so you can have a better leverage. Being aware and a leverage. Okay. It's That's a leverage game. So, right now, everybody getting hit in their pockets because of what Biden got going on behind closed doors that you're not seeing. Now, I'm not telling you whether or not I agree or disagree with Trump or Biden. That shit don't fucking matter. But what I'm telling you is how they use that, the laws to their advantage. Correct. And how they get you. Um, So. And you also was distinguishing the two types of racism of northern and southern. Type. Yeah. How um, Muhammad Ali explained that. How somebody who uses this law. Mm. To their advantage, the mm -hmm. person might not use that law. They might use another law, say less than necessary. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Pose as a friend, but you really a spy. Correct. Oh, I'm gonna tell all these black people this, this, that, and the third to get all of them and sh shaped up in their feathers, and they're like, "Oh my God, he's saying everything right, telling you a whole bunch of sweet nothings," and then they say, "You know, you've been duped. You you've been nipped, you dipped." So. That's that's just another example of. I like that because cobra heads. A lot of people think cobras are always big, wide. Cobras are not always like that. No, nah, they, they 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 smooth. They smooth like the the head of them can they form back in like a normal snake. Mm -hmm. But once they stand up, then the hood opens up. A lot of people don't know that. They think all cobras is just that way. No. But a rattlesnake will let you know you're getting too close. A rattlesnake always gonna let you know. Back up, cause you're getting too close. So. Yeah. That's a good analogy. Several different type of snakes. Yeah. That's a good analogy. They both bite. That's a good analogy. My spirit animal. Listen, mine is a, um, I believe my spirit animal is a turtle. It's a turtle and a, uh, an owl. Mine's, I took a test. Mine's is a black panther and on my dark side is a cobra. Mm. It is a cobra for some reason. And I understand why the analogy of it. I guess it's because it is the dominant one. It it does seek. Mm. And I'm not. I don't think all snakes are bad. Most people look at snakes as like bad. I don't look at snakes as bad. I don't. I don't think nothing is bad. I think. I don't think nothing is bad, but I don't think nothing is good. Okay. Explain I, that. I, express that. Express that though, because I, I what's understood between us is understandable, yeah. but you know it don't have to be explained. But explain that to people that don't understand. I think, I think that good and bad is sway is bias. Yeah, because I believe morals are biased. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like basically, it's only good to you when it's, when it's good to you. Yeah, when it's beneficial. But it's bad to you when it's bad, when it's bad to you. Yeah. Make it make sense. You, you, that could be argued. Basing off the perspective. That's it. That's like bias. The number six sitting between us. But that's a nine to you and it's a six to me. Perception. You perceive that it's a nine, but I perceive that it's a six. Right. But we both not wrong. 
It's to how we looking at the both it's sides. How we of looking it. at it? Polarity. So I don't think that nothing is good, but I don't think that nothing is bad either. Mm. It's just about understanding the perspective. And that's what I always tell people. They ask me like, "What do you want more in life?" And I was like, "I want my money, but I want understanding." Mm. And I feel like the clarity of that you said beauty is the like beauty is a curse. Our beauty is a blessing and a curse at blessing the same time. Blessing and a curse at the same time. Because you don't know if somebody wants you because of something, just because of your beauty, or you don't know if they want to use it for their own benefits. Mm-hmm. You don't know if they like you for you, or you don't know if they like you for other malicious intentions. Yeah. Same thing when you got money. You don't know who's technically in your circle because mm-hmm. you got it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Are you fucking with me because... Are you genuine? Are you genuine? Are you fucking with me because... What I could give you, mm. and I, I I like that you said and, that. And the crazy part about it is they're not wrong for that. Like like if I'm if we gonna go undefeated, like let's let's play. If I'm gonna play the dark side, if if this is a chessboard and I want to use it to my advantage, I'm not going to say that I'm wrong for getting what I want mm. out of you. If I can get it, why not? Right, right, right. For example. Women who say, like guys get upset at the fact that women use men for money, mm-hmm. but ain't you supposed to provide? Correct. Brittany Renner. Why would I not? Why would I not? And she said, put it. myself into a, the best position that I that I can be possibly in. be in. Why would I not? But the reason why she not using the law to her advantage is because the only thing you got to offer is pussy. Mm-hmm. What is, what is that to a disciplined man? You. What is that to a man who practiced dick discipline? What is that to a man who is on his purpose? What is that to a man who is not blinded by beauty? Mm. Nothing. So what else can you offer me? How am I benefiting off of you? See, it's a back and forth game. It's a leverage mm. thing. So yeah, you want the best opportunity. You want the best outcome. I want the best opportunity. I want the best outcome too. So it's about leverage. Okay, yeah, you here, but I'm here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you here. But I'm here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're here, but I'm here. And if we can come to a mutual understanding, we can both go up like this. Mm-hmm. And that's the name of the game is to go up like this. When it comes to building a legacy, you got a king and a queen. There's only one king and there's only one queen. Everybody else is ranked up under them. Mm-hmm. We both can't be the same, but we both got to be here because if we both clashing, it's more war, yeah. It's causing more war and casualties. Yeah. So the the name of the game when it comes to these laws is to understand the laws to be able to use these laws to your advantage. Mm. If you if you're not aware of these laws, somebody will use these laws against you to their advantage. Mm-hmm. Are they wrong for doing that? No. You just ignorant, and now you've been duped. Ignorant to the law is no excuse. I've been manipulative. Basically. Manipulated, so y'all don't think I'm read, ignorant. read, comprehend, <laughs> understand, read. clarity, get read. undefeated, undefeated, asking why. Don't if you can't, if somebody explains something to you and somebody wants you to sign a dotted line or asking you a question or giving you answer and saying you say why and they get mad at you for you asking why, throw that shit out the window. It's a red flag. Throw that shit out the window. Because if you can't ask the simple question, why and what do you mean? Well, explain that to me. Help me understand. Yeah. And if they try to make you feel belittled, well, 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 no, well, nothing. Tell me this again. and Explain it to me in a better way. A genius can easily make something seem one, two, three to a toddler that they can do it. But you said if you know, you know what you know. You know you know what you're doing when you can explain it to a child and they can follow the rules. Oh yeah, yeah. Just like that. Yep. If it's that difficult, somebody who's basically you can't explain. You can't explain calculus to somebody who's still stuck on basic math. I'm trying to learn my multiplication facts. Yeah. Well, I can't teach you calculus. I don't know my parabolas and all the other stuff. I don't know how to do yeah. my division either. If it makes sense forward, it makes I sense backwards. backwards. If you can't understand this, you ain't going to understand that.
But if you can understand this, you got the ability to right. understand and that. We said, we said, <laughs> you said ten thousand plus ten thousand <laughs> equal one thousand. <laughs> if you take your ten bands. And I and take, I my, take my 10 bands, that's going to equal the 100 band. And we ain't say multiply. We said his 10 bands plus my 10 bands. We got 100 bands. Make it make sense. That math don't add up. Two job. plus two is five. <laughs> but that's the world we live in, though. Yeah. Ignorance, bro. So... When people to get taken advantage of, goddamn forty cell, it's they get upset because of they. Oh, you, you got me, yeah. Off your ignorance. Off your ignorance. Don't get mad at me because you got got. Mm-hmm. Understand mm-hmm. the game. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. The name of the game is to understand the rules to the game. Right. Stop going against the grain and play the game. Yeah. Stop trying to change the rules and play the game. Yeah, man. You so, know. I could use that as a big example because a lot of people used to come into a place where you're selling cars. And well, car salesmen are the worst type of people. No, they're not the worst type of people. They just know more than you. You just know more and you're ignorant and they expose you off your ignorance. If you know you came in here with a certain amount of budget and you already did your research and background of something, right? Why would you let somebody else talk you out of something that's already outside of your budget? And that's what they're supposed to do. We're shooting high for a number. I don't sell cars no more, but they're shooting high for a certain percentage. Not all car, car salesmen are come at you 100%. They're going to look for what you requested. They're going to do what's best for them of their own incentive. You came in for a $20,000 car. You let me talk you into a $40,000 car. Listen, the system was designed for it to do what it's supposed to do. Don't get mad at the system for working. Get mad at you for getting got by the system. Okay, so I, I got one to challenge you, right? So you can explain it. I know you got it. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the laws. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody keep talking about equality, equality, the system, equality, equality. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, the, the, the 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 equality. We 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 equal. We equal. Well, tell me this. How the fuck is we equal, right? When these laws was made in a time that we was less than. Yeah. I, so I explain it to you like this. The reason why black people get so upset about white supremacy or stuff like that is because we are the latter half of that. We are the short end of the stick. I tell black people, this is a hard conversation to have. Mm. We are entertainment. That's it. You are entertainment. Why do you think we dance? Why do you think we sing? Why do you think we strip? Why do you think we catch balls? Why do you think we shoot the ball in a hole? Why do you think we fight? Why do you think all of this stuff? You are entertainment. Talented. That's it. To the to the marketplace. Strictly. That ain't got shit to do with how I feel. That ain't got shit to do with... with Was more morally right. About you. Yeah. That ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Politically... I'm telling you, from the economic system, you are entertainment. That's it. You got the body we like. <laughs> you got the voice we want. You got the speed we can't. You're not bringing no value to the marketplace to make this conversation full circle. Mm-hmm. You're not a doctor. You're not a scientist. You're not a lawyer. You're not. You're not building. Uh, you're not a judge. You're not in the law. Mm-hmm. You're not in doing all this other stuff because we don't glorify it. Right. So we don't want to do those things. Right. Those, that's real value. If I can create a business to give you a job, that's value. But since the masses of black people yep. want to sit here and continue to do hair, nails, makeup, you are entertainment. Mm. That is not value. That's, that has nothing to do with the economic system. So when it comes down to what you was just about to say, you've been duped by the system. Yeah. Don't get mad at me because you getting got by the system. Don't get mad at me because you're nothing but entertainment. Don't money. get mad at me because you don't understand the it's contract because you don't want to read. Don't it's, get mad at me. It's fast money, Deshaun. This is how the game go. It's fast money, Deshaun. But, 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 but this is what you want. Let me play the devil's advocate. It's fast money, Deshaun. But this is what you want. It's it's quick. I need it right now. Yeah. I want to shine. I want to stun on these niggas. I want I want, I want to stun on these hoes. 
I gotta have that new S S R T. Okay. I gotta have a big drill. I gotta have a big drill. I gotta have push it. and pee. I'm trying to push P. You, you can it? have it. I'm trying to be big drill. Big Five ice. years from now, will you still have it? Big ice on my Ten years from now, will you still have it? But you got it right now though. Yeah. You can have it. I'm gonna swipe. I'm gonna swipe. PPP long. I'm gonna hit it. I'm gonna hit Why it. Why not? Bro. You can have it. I'm gonna hit a big bite. Big big bottles on me. Tonight. Everything that you desire, I can give you. Right. Right now. Big bottles on me. What about ten years from now? What about twenty years from now? What about fifty years from now? What about a hundred years from now? Fucked (laughs) up. But everything you want, you can have. Every 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 big boss, which is the bank, by Mm -hmm. the way. People don't know the bank is the boss boss for real. Are they wrong for getting you? Cause you allowed them to. That's the question. You allowed that to happen because why you chose not to read. Because why you you subscribe to the notion of that you entertainment? Mm. Because why you chose to follow the crowd? Because the crowd peer pressured you into being and believing that you were supposed to be Something a certain way. Something that you're not. Oh, they taught you that you were supposed to be independent as a lady. Yes, bitch. Be independent. What's the long term effect of that? Your no ass. man <laughs> gonna die alone. No man. Having children by yourself. Now you out here fending for yourself. COVID-19 hit. All of a sudden, you out here by yourself getting sickly. Ain't nobody out here to take care of you. No plan. You going to sleep by yourself. That vibrator ain't going to get that job done. Going to fry your clit off. (laughs) Now you can't come when you had intercourse. (laughs) What's the long-term effect? Gentlemen. Oh, they told you you were supposed to get taken care of by a female. What's the long-term effect of that? You can't fight. You can't lead. You, you can't provide. You can't communicate. When it's time to actually put get your hands dirty, you're too soft. Pushing P, though. What's the long-term effect? No, my, nobody's not thinking. Motherfucker's not thinking. You dumb. Now, let, let's, let's sit here. And, if we have the hard conversation that a lot of people don't want to talk about, again, 50 Cent said it when he was in Manhattan. These niggas is green. You niggas is lazy. He talked about the 48 Laws of Power. He talked about mastery. He talked about artist seduction. I can make you niggas have this because of what you want. I can feed off your desires because of what you want, but you don't understand the long-term effect. So I'm going to give you everything that you need because why? You're dumb. You don't read. And you're going to be your own destruction. But are they wrong for exploiting your ignorance? Nope. No. Nope. You allowed that to happen. Nope. Because why? You choose to be dumb. And then he came back. Victor came back. Even when he told him, he was being more aggressive, direct towards it, more blunt, boast. Not even boasting, but blunt. Just yeah. completely blunt. That's a law. Uh, then he came back and said, if I could give game to a lot of niggas in the hood, and he said it, you know, he, I don't even think 50 really likes saying niggas for real. I think he grew out of it, mm. but I think when he said it, it's just something that makes certain people just relax. It's yeah. like, he was, uh, how he said it was, niggas need to get out their hood, see the world, expand your horizon. Yep. Because you get so small-minded into this notion of this world and around you that you feel like this is more than life. And then when you get outside and you come back, you be like, this shit ain't this nothing. This ain't nothing. It's nothing. But if, this you, if you want to volunteer into this, yeah, it's, you can have it. You can stay out on these street corners and do what you want to do. Kill yourself. It's called proximity crime. Uh, crime. Instead of black-on-black crime, it's really called proximity crime. Right. Y'all ain't got no resources. So y'all kill each other voluntarily. Because at the end of the day, motherfuckers take resources out of your neighborhood. So now you don't have shit. So now you want to fight the dude who right next to you who can help you build. But instead, you don't want to do that because you don't want to read that the fact that there's a system that is designed to destroy you. But you want to voluntarily kill your dude for a block that you don't own. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. You take your 10 bands. I take my 10 bands. We got 100. Come on, dog. Come on, dog. But we want to get mad at a system that's working. It's working. And we helping it. And we helping it voluntarily. You are entertainment. <laughs> and we talking about. And we gonna the, put you. We gonna put your stupid ass back on the TV show and the movie. And we gonna rewind it. And then we gonna feed it to your babies so they follow the same system. Yeah. Hypnotic rhythm. Yeah. 
hypnotic rhythm. You voluntarily are destroying your own community. But again, leverage, ignorance. Why would I? Why would I not? Why would I not? Why would I not destroy you when you violate? As a matter of fact, I ain't even about to destroy you. You'll do it yourself. I don't already got an emotion. Our great great granddaddies put an emotion. Habit. It's already written. What that book called Lynch. Because you going to teach your son that men ain't shit, but he a boy. So when he grow up, he automatically believe, I can't become a man because I was taught that men not shit. So next thing you know, I'm going to go around here and not be shit when I finally become a man because I was programmed to believe that men not shit, which is going to go back into, if I see another man, I'm going to think he not shit, and I'm going to voluntarily kill him because I was told that men ain't shit. I don't want to be no man, and I don't want no man around me. So when a man come around me, police, I feel, I feel threatened. Now I don't know how to be able to respect the authority because men not shit, remember? Right. Where'd it come from? <laughs> we voluntarily call ourselves niggas, but the definition of a nigga is somebody of ignorance who don't know. What's up, my nigga? You're right. You are a nigga. Ignorant. But yeah. again, you could be that. That's cool. That's cool. Put the goals in. It's cool. Five, ten years from now, where you gonna be at? Twenty years from now, where you gonna be at? And everybody talking about legacy. Come Ain't no on. legacy. You're building. You're basically with the, you're fabricating yourself. You're lying to yourself. Delusion. Yeah. To affirm something that is not real. I'm spraying perfume on shit. Is the process of delusion. Ignorant. I'm, I'm about to spray on. I ain't bathed in weeks, but I'm finna put on this Dior Sauvage. I'm finna put on this cologne. And guess what? After when I move a certain way, and that stench finally do hit somebody, that shit mold and decay. Again, bro. Yeah. It's called undefeated rhymes for a reason because I don't care about how you feel. It's well, about let's, how you move. Let's, let's get undefeated. And let's... Basically, the information that I'm giving you is not me saying like. Oh, like, I hope we lose. I hope we, you know, black people will never be on top. No. What I'm saying is, you know. Stop playing in the hand. <laughs> yeah, basically, stop volunteering yourself to be a part of the system. But again, what the Matrix taught us, this, this past Matrix, the resurrection was, he specifically said, they call sheeple. They like it here. Mm. You you hear the saying what Kevin Gates say? You want to talk about all this toxic shit? You gonna like it here? You gonna love it here? You gonna love it here? You you exact? I'm reaffirming that you gonna like this shit. You gonna voluntarily do this shit? Don't even know the, the un, results. Un, un, unwilling? What? Un? You know? So you are willingly doing it. Hmm? You just don't understand what you don't you, the understand fruit. the seed that you're planting of the fruit that you gonna bear later. Hmm. And I'm challenging you to think about it. And so the thing about it is that we saying with these laws that they're secretly putting this on you and making you fall victim of it, and you you basically cheat. But basically, is, is but is it a secret though? I don't think it's a secret. I don't. I personally don't think it's a secret. For the ones who know, they know. For the ones who don't, you don't. Right. But I'm saying you 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 basically pig going to the slaughter like you. You walking in blindfolded. There's a book that I want to refer you guys to. I don't have it physically, but uh, it's called the the Kib Kiblon Kiblon. If I'm not mistaken, I'm, I think I'm pronouncing it wrong. But at the beginning of the book, the context of the book, you know, you know how they introduce the book. Mm -hmm. uh, it basically explains why secret societies were formed mm -hmm. because when they were trying to tell the masses this type of information basically that I'm explaining they wanted to kill these people because they're like oh you, you tripping mm -hmm. so what they did was they moved in silence they learned how to move in silence and it makes sense why would I tell you the information that, that's going to cause chaos to your brain for you to try to destroy me because you can't understand so I'm going to move in silence mm -hmm. I'm going to create a society where we understand the truth but you don't Mm -hmm. Because you're not, you're not ready yet. You're not open-minded enough. So I'm not going to tell you what you need to know to free your mind. 
I'm gonna just allow you to destroy yourself. Correct. Because I can only control the top ten. I can only manage the top fifteen. But then you have the five percent who wants to give this knowledge away for you to be able to free your mind. Mm. It's a battle amongst the no and the and the ignorant. The have, the have nots. Mm-hmm. Rich, middle, poor. It's classism. So division. It, it, it's, it's division, but it's it's just more so about the have, the have nots. The no versus the ignorant. Are they wrong? Morally, you will say, yeah, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with that. But morals ain't got shit to do with this game called life. You don't tell a lion not to kill a fucking gazelle. <laughs> because it's morally wrong. That bit fool. Yeah. So, that being said, we having technical difficulties, but it is what it is. We're going to keep it bit rolling. Adversity, how you handle it. So, I think this was a good episode because we kind of, we talked about an important topic, but it kind of veered over into some other important topics too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, bro. How you feel about it? I feel pretty good. I feel like uh, we did get accomplished. You know what I'm saying? What we were saying. And hopefully a lot of people that are interested and that are awakening and that are paying attention to the have and have nots. You know, being ignorant and knowing. Because the only thing that separates you from being wealthy and rich, of course, is discipline. But it's the knowledge that you weren't accessible to. But now it's kind of hard to say what you're not accessible to because we have the internet. Um, but you waking up, the ones that's watching. Yeah, it's just... Um I'm just telling you to think. Whatever you do is what you do. And you're not right or wrong for doing whatever you want to do. If you want to voluntarily go be a part of the system, hey, that's your choice. If you want to challenge yourself to be able to take, be ahead of the system and play the game the right way, hey, that's your choice. It is what it is. I ain't on nobody's side. I'm on Deshaun's side. You know what I'm saying? I'm on Rashad's side, but I'm on an undefeated mind side. But whatever you choose is what you choose. I'm just here to challenge you to make you think. That's all. You know what I'm saying? Hey, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just playing the game. It is what it is. Yep. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close this thing out. Y'all know what I always say. Together we stand. Divided we fall. Fuck the middle man, you feel me? We're going to see y'all on the next episode. I'll holla at y'all. 2022. We here now. Holla at y'all. Hey. Peace. Uh, I be on a go to the dawn of the daylight. Dodging all the demon, I'm just trying to get my K right. These streets don't love you. Nah, these streets don't love you. Moving through the trenches and surviving by any means. I on my paper, other eye on my enemies. I know these streets don't love you. Nah, these streets don't love you.